happy Friday. It's Aaron Brightman, Scarlet Faithful, coming to you day after extremely disappointing loss on the road at Wisconsin. Rutgers now really struggling, having lost five of its last six games and has senior night Sunday at the rack against Ohio State. 15 to 15 right now, 7 and 12 in the Big Ten. First losing season in five years in the Big Ten, in danger of its first overall losing season uh, in the same time frame. And it's very disappointing. It's frustrating. No one's happy. If you think anyone in the program is happy with the season, you're crazy. But as I like to do, just offering a little bit of perspective here, because things can always be worse. And if you don't know that, well, I would say look at our own program for many, many years. But I know, listen, people get upset. It's, it's Steve Peichel's eighth year. Got to move on. Expectations through the roof. Listen, expectations should be high. And, and I've said before, all the disappointment, that's because of the success that's been had that Steve Peichel has produced. And things could be worse. Heck, we could be Indiana fans. Look at Indiana right now. Complete shambles. Yes, they're, they're 9 and 10 in the Big Ten. They've won three in a row. whoop de do For a program like that, I mean, they, they avoided. I'm glad they're getting a single bye because their fans need something right now. They just announced that Mike Woodson's going to return. Yesterday, two days ago, yesterday, five-star Liam McNeely decommits. He's already signed. He's asking out of his letter of intent. They now have zero commits for the 2024 class. There's a bunch of, you know, I mean, Indiana fans, there's a lot of swirling rumors out there. I mean, it sounds like their roster could very much be very, very much in flux in the offseason. I'll just leave it at that. And they are an extremely unstable program right now, today. Yes, they're two games ahead of Rutgers in the, in the standings, whatever. Rutgers has beat them eight of the last 10 meetings. I mean, there's some Indiana fans that seriously thought they were going to get Dylan Harper over Rutgers. So, there, you know, there's a lot of uh, dealing with denial <laughs> and lack of reality over there. But that is the truth. You can look right now. And I don't, I don't care that Rutgers has seven wins and Indiana has nine. Rutgers is a far healthier more stable basketball, college basketball, men's program right now than Indiana. Could be Michigan. Look at Michigan. Tremendous success in the Big Ten of late. Michigan and Indiana both are national brands, right? Indiana is no longer the blue blood they once were. They're still Indiana. It still has some credit. It's kind of like Georgetown. You know, there's a national brand there. Michigan has had tremendous success over the last decade plus. Obviously, under John Beeline, Jawan Howard had some success early on, a lot of success. And the last two years have been really tough for them. This season has been a disaster. And I think the big thing with Woodson and Howard, and, and you know, Howard, there's been some, you know, a lot of issues within that program. The strength coach just settled and, and quit. There was a whole dispute there. I think the big thing that you can look at, Rutgers comparatively to Michigan and Indiana, is that, Woodson and Howard have no juice recruiting-wise right now. They have much better NIL situations, and they have zero juice. And that's a that's a that's a tenure-killing development. If you lose all your momentum recruiting, it's it's a lost cause more or less at that point. And on the flip side, Steve Peichel has never had more juice on the recruiting trail than right now. With the number three recruiting class scheduled to come in, all five recruits are signed. You have two of the top three recruits in the country. And yes, next season is no guarantee. There are a lot of variables. There's no guarantees in life, right? And the Rutgers has a lot of work to do, a lot. But I think it's important to look at the big picture. And yes, in the moment, things are very disappointing, very frustrating. But, you know, look at Northwestern. Look at Northwestern. Chris Collins in his 11th season makes the NCAA tournament for the first time in program history in his fourth season, follows that up with five consecutive losing seasons. Five. And they kept him. 
And then the last two seasons, he's turned it around. I like Chris Collins. You got to give him credit. And you got to give Northwestern credit for sticking with him. But that's five losing seasons in a row. 15 and 17, 13 and 19, 8 and 23, 9 and 15, 15 and 16. Then last year, they rebounded. They had 22 wins. They, they won a game in the NCAA tournament. This year, they're at 20 and 10 in line for the NCAA tournament. Every program has down moments. You know, Purdue and Michigan State had losing records in the Big Ten in the last five years. There, there's it's, there's no, no program is immune to a down season. For those that want to point to a downward trajectory of the last three seasons, well, listen. <laughs> the Steve Peichel era has been a success. Is it leveling off? Is there a ceiling? I mean, every program has a ceiling. Next season, we all hope that ceiling raises quite a bit. Tons of expectations. But you can't put the cart before the horse and how you judge things, right? And if you look at the body of work, the body of work is still really good. And if you look at it in context, the rest of the conference, you know, with the Big Ten expanding, with college basketball, the NCAA tournament potentially expanding, which I'm, I'm against, by the way. But listen. It certainly wouldn't be a bad thing for the Big Ten and for Rutgers, but I, I don't want it to happen as a, as a college basketball fan. Or if it does, I, I think it's got to be minimal. And, 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 you know, I think it's got to include non-high majors as some kind of buy-in. But that's – I'm getting off the record uh, – off the topic here. My point is Rutgers is well-positioned for the, for the immediate future and beyond. And although this is a down year and although it's been very hard – to follow, right? Rutgers is very much the poster boy for the reality of the ever-changing NIL era over last in the last year. In the offseason, the, the, the attrition they suffered was, was really unprecedented in losing two starters so late in the offseason cycle. And there, I, I get comments, you know, stop making excuses. Okay, but it's reality, right? Just as much as the reality of them signing the number three recruiting class for next season is the reality that they lost their two starting guards late in the offseason. Rutgers added to the roster the best they could. You know, it, it, there was also, a, I mean, they added a lot of guys that are coming out that were re responding, bouncing back from injuries. So could, should have things gone better? Yes, they haven't. It's not the end of the world. It's disappointing. It's frustrating. It's, it's very disappointing. But at the same time, it's one season. Overall body of work. There's a lot to be proud of as a Rutgers fan in the Steve Peichel era. And next season is extremely exciting. Could be a lot worse. Could be Indiana. Could be Michigan. Look at Northwestern bouncing back. Could be We could be Rutgers from before. This is not the Rutgers of before and have some faith Sunday. I really hope for the senior sake, this team can respond with a victory. They deserve all the applause. doesn't matter that this season has been a disappointment. When you strip away all the expectation, all that, they, they, these are student athletes have given everything and I'll, I'll you know, I'm going to have a preview for Saturday, but I just wanted to come on real quick and kind of give my two cents on the state of things. I think just the, it, I just think the way you look at Indiana and Michigan right now and you look at Rutgers, I think that helps put things into perspective. And looking at Northwestern and how they've responded. So breathe, enjoy life. I Rutgers is still a relevant basketball program. And when before Steve Peichel got here, they were only relevant for one reason. They were a laughing stock. 279 in Ken Palm. Before that, scandal, 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 scandal. So put on your Rutgers hat, put on your Rutgers R, whatever you do, wear it with pride. The journey beyond this season is going to be even more sweet because of what we've gone through this season. Have a great weekend. I'll have a game preview for Ohio State on Saturday. Thanks for listening to the Scarlet Faithful Podcast once again. 